let's set the stage in the Sicilian port of Eryx, after their very soaring voyage from Carthage that hindered their travel to Italy. It has been one year since the anniversary of Anchises' death. Aeneas proposes eight days of sacrificial offerings. Mm. We are here to make our sacrifices. I mm. sacrifice my glasses, mm. even though mm. I won't be able to see, and he will sacrifice mm. his iPad, because he can't live without it. <laughs> Where a serpent appears, but turns out to be just harmless. And on the ninth day, he proposes competitive games in honor of his father. Welcome to the first annual funeral games. Live from Sicily, I am Bianca, and I would like to introduce my co-host, my fake plant, Karen. Say hi, Karen. Okay. For our first event, we have rowing. Currently, we have four ships along the coastline with many spectators cheering from the beach. Let's hear it, guys! <laughs> Woo! We, our, our ship captains are Gaius, Sergestus, Columbus, and Menestus. And now they are off with Gaius in the lead, but uh oh! Whoa! It looks like at the turnaround point, his helmet took a turn too wide and his boat fell behind. Sugar. We are in the final stretch and Sergestus takes the lead, but oof, plows into rocks. Did you see that, Karen? Columbus and Menestus are now tied, but what's Columbus doing? It looks like he's praying to Neptune? Wait, my people are telling me it's working because Columbus wins! Mirabaluisu! Now, Aeneas is bestowing an optimistic risk to all the competitors. He really spared no expense with his lavish prizes. <laughs> we are ready for our second part of the competition, which is our foot race. Our races are Nessus and Euryalus. And they are off with Nessus in the lead, and he's doing really good. He looks like he's going to win. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, yikes. He just slipped and fell on some, my people are telling me sacrificial blood. Ugh, people have no common courtesy during these games. It's ridiculous, but that means Euryalus wins the race. All right, it looks like boxing is next as Mighty Darius is putting it on his heavy fighting gloves and it looks like he's challenging anyone to box with him. And Talus, a worthy opponent, accepts the challenge and now they are really pounding each other. Oh, Karen, don't look at this, you're too young. Darius darts quicker from the punch from Intellus. Intellus falls to the ground. Intellus is getting back up and attacks Darius. Oh my Jupiter, this is insane. The fighting has become so much now. Now, Aeneas has decided to end the match. All right, Karen, you're okay. Just didn't want you to see that. <sighs> but, ew, what is Intellus doing? The, okay, he's backing off. But, ew, he just punched, he just killed his prize bull with a punch and down its brains all over the place. Such an ungrateful boy. That wasn't even that intimidating. What did you just say? Get your collectible Indian Book 5 cards or else. They are at a price and you will buy them. small break we just took, but I hope you enjoyed our commercial. Um, so while we were away, 
your team won archery by shooting a duck out of the sky. But for some reason, I can't see this arrow miraculously caught on fire midair. Whoop de doo. Alright, on to the next event. Finally, for our last event, the youths of the Troy and Sicily are riding out on horseback to demonstrate their technique and skill. As they charge at each other in a mock battle exercise, let's look at our proudly impressed fathers in the crowd. Take it away! I'm looking at my son up there. Oh! He is the pride and joy of my life. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the funeral games. I'm Bianca and this is Karen and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Take it away, narrator. Gino dispatches Iris down to the Trojan woman, who are further along the beach from the men. Iris stirs them to riot, using their fear of more journey and battles against them. She gives them flaming torches and convinces them to burn the ship so that the men will be forced to build their new city in Sicily. The Trojan men see the smoke from the ships and rush up to the beach. They douse the ships with water, but can't put out the flames. Finally, Aeneas sends a prayer to Jupiter to save the ships. This causes Jupiter to start a rainstorm to stop the fire. Aeneas thinks he should end the voyage, but he receives some wise words of wisdom from Nautes on what he should do. Aeneas considers the plan of leaving some Trojans behind with the Kestes, but he was still unsure. Then his father appears to him as a ghost, telling him, Guess what? Yes, they do. You need to listen to Nautes, okay? Yes. Okay, you're going to listen to Nautes? Yes. But you have to visit me in the underworld, all right? Yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Bye. Aeneas describes the encounter to Kestes, who agrees with the plan. Venus becomes worried about the safety's group at sea from Juno's wrath. She pleads to Neptune for help, and he agrees for them safe passage across the water, saying that one of the crew members must perish on the voyage as a sort of sacrifice for the others. But who are we going to choose? On the voyage, Palinaris, the lead captain of Aeneas' fleet, falls asleep at the helm and falls into the sea.